Hello? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, hello? Yes, hel- hello? Uh, yes, this is Mr. John Video from YouTube. I'm sorry, you said John Video? Uh, uh, yes, sir, that's right. I'm uh, calling to tell you your channel is terrible and you need to take it down. Take it down? Yeah, your channel like uh stinks and you need to take it down. <laughs> oh well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'd love to have a chance to at least plead my case. Could I get your email so I could provide some kind of written response? Uh, Come up with something. Uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be Joe Video at YouTube dot. Com okay. Dot org at www dot backslash. Mm-hmm. Is this Jasper? Uh, I, um. Look, don't feel you need to answer. I know it's you. I don't know where you guys have been, but things here just aren't the same without you. This morning, I had to drink my coffee out of a candle holder. I know things have been tough. During times like these, no one knows when it'll all be over, and that can lead people to do some pretty strange things. You know, one minute you're a perfectly rational human being, and the next you're inventing ridiculous fictional narratives and making up cartoon regional accents for your inanimate household objects. Look happen to any of us. But if there's one thing I know, it's that family will take us through anything. And when we put all this behind us, we can look back and smile. Knowing that we did everything we could to keep that family together. You know what I mean? (laughs) Did you hear what he said? Yeah, I heard. Oh, and Jasper? Yeah, boss? Don't ask me how I know what your voice sounds like, even though I've technically never heard you talk out loud before. It's probably best not to spend too much time picking that one apart. Now, be careful out there, you two crazy kids. You really mean it? We can come back if we want to? You got it, dude. Good morning, guys. Before we get started on today's material, I want to talk about some, not changes, but ways that I'm going to shift things up a little bit. So first of all, uh, the seniors, you have a grand total of something like two and a half weeks left. So I want to make sure that we're able to hit the high points of this section. Now that said, we're going to cover the stuff that I know many of you are probably going to see on a mathematics readiness test, but I've talked to a lot of you guys lately especially if you're going into engineering programs. I want you to go and take a look at the rest of section 5.2. Uh, we were going to continue with sketching graphs yes, uh, today, but with the time we have left, I want to make sure we hit the, the bigger points. So while knowing how to do some of that more elaborate stuff is important for some of you, uh, I want to make sure that we hit stuff that's probably going to be even more crucial especially for those of you guys who are planning on taking the Alex qualification test through LSU. So that's, that's the first big idea. Make sure that if you want to, especially if you're going to be starting calculus in the fall, I recommend strongly that you go back and take a close look at the rest of section 5.2, which is basically sketching those graphs with transformations uh, and then working with the domain and asymptotes with transformations. So it's a lot like what we did with exponentials only now being done with logarithmic functions. Now that said, I want to skip ahead to 5.3. And the good news is, remembering at this point that logarithms and exponentials are inverses of one another, 
is actually going to make what we're going to talk about here a fairly simple idea. So hopefully you remember when we are working with exponents, if you think way back to Algebra 1, you learned three big rules when you were working with exponents, and they're, they're really easy to work with, and for many of you, this is probably some of the easiest stuff in Algebra 1. That's the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. But if you don't remember the names, that's fine. You may just remember this. Remember, when we're multiplying variables with different exponents, but they're the same variable, we just add the exponents together. And when we're dividing exponents with different variables, we just subtract the exponents. And when we raise a power to a power, we just multiply those two. You're gonna see that these take very similar forms here. So we're gonna go over quickly what each one is, and then I'm gonna show you some application examples. We're gonna look at four total today. Really pay close attention, and if they don't make sense, go back and watch the video again. So the first one is the product rule, and, and if you understand what I said about exponents, you already have the basics here. Basically, if we're taking the log base b of two factors, which we'll call u and v, then we can essentially split those two factors up and add them together as separate logs. So hopefully you can see that this is kind of a minor variation on what we used to do with exponents. Now, for those of you thinking, why do I need to know this rule? Because what you're gonna see is that when we're trying to simplify these logarithms, we have to be able to split them up so we can, in a sense, get rid of the logs in some cases. And when we look at examples, you'll see what I'm talking about. But the basic idea is you're gonna split out a part that you can reduce or simplify, and reduce or simplify that part, and then leave it connected to the part that you can't. Quotient rule, same thing. Log base b of u over v, or u divided by v, there instead of adding, we're just gonna subtract. So log base b of u minus log base b of v. And you'll see again in a minute how that works. Lastly, the power rule. So log base b of u raised to the r power. So notice that we're actually raising this to a power here. But remember, this is also, this log is also the inverse of an exponential function. So in a sense, we've got an exponent on top of an exponent. If you want to think about it, that's not precise, but hopefully that'll help you get a better idea of what's going on here. We can take this exponent and move it to the front and just multiply it by the log. So log base b of u raised to the r power is the same thing as that exponent r just multiplied by the log base b of u with no exponent whatsoever. Now I'm about to dissolve so we can take a look at some examples, but if the, these ideas aren't clear, I recommend maybe going back and taking a look at them one more time before we dissolve and take a look at the examples. But if you're ready to move on, I'm gonna stand here for a second and magically dissolve. Okay, so let's take a look at the first two of the four examples that we're gonna look at today. And remember, the idea here is that we're looking to split them up in such a way that allows us to simplify or essentially compute the value of one part or the other. So if we take a look at this first one, we've got log base two of eight X. And remember, don't, don't lose your easy skills here. That's essentially just eight times X. So using the product rule, we can actually break that apart into log base two of eight plus log base two of x. And you might think to yourself, okay, great. Well, now what can I do? Remember, we can't really do anything with this because of this variable. But if you remember what a logarithm really means, a base raised to a power equals a value, and we remember what these numbers represent, then we can work with this. So the log base two of eight basically means that this base of two raised to some power equals eight. And so if we know what that power is, then we can essentially compute the value of this logarithm. So two raised to some power equals eight, shouldn't take us too long to think about this, that that's equal to three we have essentially computed the actual value of this log. Now, we can't do the same thing here because two raised to what power equals x? Well, not much we can do with that, so we're gonna leave that one alone. But this is a simplified answer 
to this to this original logarithm. We've actually managed to pull part of it out and compute an actual value. Let's take a look at this one. And remember, don't freak out when you see natural logs. Natural logs just mean logs that have a base of e. That, that's really all that means. And you're gonna see how we use that here in a second. So we're gonna use the quotient rule here, just subtract. So that's gonna give us the natural log of x minus the natural log of e to the fifth. And again, some of you might think to yourself, my guess is that I can't do anything with this first part. You'd be right. Well, what about this second part? The natural log of e to the fifth power. Don't get confused here. Remember, in most logs, we're given a base, unless we're talking about our common log where our base is 10. Here, there doesn't seem to be one, but don't forget. Natural log just means a log with a base of e. So it's redundant to write it here, but that might help you get a better idea of what's going on. So this natural log basically means e raised to what power, there's our answer, gives us e to the fifth. Well, that's pretty simple. If you wanna raise e to a power to make it e to the fifth, you raise it to the fifth power. So we simplify this one in a sense by saying the natural log of x minus 5. Got two more examples to look at. I'm going to dissolve one more time. I couldn't, I, I couldn't remember what position I was in. Sorry. But just assume that it worked. So the two that we're going to look at here, and don't worry, this last one, you're probably looking at it and it's freaking you out. Don't worry. We're going to talk about one of those properties that... It's kind of confusing at first, but hopefully now seeing it work will be simplified. So we use the product rule for our first example. We use the quotient rule for our second example. We're going to use the power rule for this one. So we have log base one half of the fourth root of x. And you might be thinking, wait, I thought you said for the power rule, we needed x to be raised to a power. Well, you do. But remember our rules with radicals and exponents, we can kind of convert them back and forth. So this fourth root of x, we can write as an exponent. So let's go ahead and do that. That gives us log base one half of x raised to the one fourth power. Most of us should feel pretty good about what we just did there. Now, we just put the power rule to work for us. We take that exponent and we move it to the front. Don't worry about fractions. Don't worry about strange fact fractional bases. Remember, we more just want to treat them as building blocks to do what we need them to do here. Now, this one is going to use an old property that we just touched on a little bit called the cancellation property at the end. That's good. That's all fine and good. I really want you to see what we're doing here. So how can we simplify this using properties? So we have 7 raised to the log base 7 of 6 plus the log base 7 of 3. Now, forget about the 7 for a second. Just look at this exponent up here, which is the sum of these two logs. Think to yourself, based on the three powers, which one might we be able to work with there? Hopefully, you thought to yourself, product rule, and you'd be right, only this is in reverse. So you can see we're adding these two logs together, but they have the same base. So thinking about the product rule in reverse, we can start the first step in simplifying this. So hopefully everybody will get that this is the same thing as 7 raised to the log base 7 of 6 times 3 power. We, instead of, we just use that product rule in reverse. So hopefully everybody will then see that that gives us 7 to the log base 7 of 18. And from here, you might think we're as close as we can get. But there's one more step. I really glossed over the cancellation property when we covered it, because again, just given our circumstances, I want to keep things simple. But for those of you going into calculus, pay attention to this last one. The cancellation rule is basically this. If I ever raise anything to a power, and that power is a log of the same base as the base that I'm originally starting with, then I can essentially cancel those two things out. So if it was x raised to the log base x, or e raised to the log base e, 
I could essentially cancel those out and just be left with what was, what's left within the rest of the log. So by canceling those two out, I get an answer of 18. If what I just did for some of you is confusing, don't worry, on quizzes and tests, I'm gonna kinda try to stay away from that. You're gonna see one, but nothing that's gonna uh, muddy the waters too much. On that subject, tomorrow, uh, we're gonna cover a couple of new items, but prepare for a quiz on uh, Tuesday of next week. It's generally when we do those. So first of all, if uh, you have any questions and you're watching this video early enough in the morning, Remember, I'll be available for live conferences. Make sure to check those out. Uh, if not, before the quiz on Tuesday, you'll be able to catch me in live conferences there. Want to wish everybody the best of luck with this. Really hope that you're all doing well, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day. Oh.